What's up, YouTube? Uh, Casual You Go here. I'm Chris. Jesse. And we're doing a list of top five changes that we would like to see in Yu Gi Oh! Yeah, um, the game, we got out of it for quite a while because the game got a little bit uh, stale. Yeah, it just, I don't know, it's definitely like it needs. It needs new life, new energy, and change. Like it, there's things that need to change about the game. There's things that they've changed that needs to should have stayed the same. You know, so these are just our opinions. Hope you guys liked it. Hope you guys enjoy lists like this. We love making lists um, and just love talking about the game. Um, yeah, you're, this is your kind of idea to do this, so yeah. I think you should start off. I should start off first. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my number one. Uh, You're number five. We're well, yeah, down. my number five. I'm sorry, yeah. not my number one. Uh, but the the thing that I guess I want to see in the game is more like tech cards. Um, it's weird because like um, most of the stuff is made for like an archetype at this point. It's made either specifically to only work inside of an archetype or made with the idea that it is going to be used in an archetype. And I like more like generic cards that can be used for anything in general, but not like, not that I want every card to be made like that because I like archetypes in general. It's just, I'd like there to be, I don't know, sort of widespread, easy to use cards. Things like what they had back in the day, like not more upstart, but maybe. Yeah, but I feel, I feel like they've made cards like that. And that's why you see people run Triple Ash Blossom because they're like, oh, it's a card I can sprinkle in my deck. Cool, like three. Max out that before it was Psalm Strike. Max out that and like those but were not, staples. Not like like Pot of Extravagance. Any deck that doesn't care about the extra deck, they're gonna run three Pot of Extravagance until it gets hit on the list. It's like that's the staples that are the most broken. That's what people are gonna play. I kind of get what you're saying, but I think yeah, I think not a staple. Okay, but I think we already have most of the cards that you're thinking of in your head. Yeah, there's always like room for possibilities to make new stuff, but they've kind of done that, and it's like. The old stuff is either not as good as it used to be, obviously, because, you know, like, we've advanced so far in the game. Or, if it is good, they banned it. I just like, want maybe, like, a, a, a rock, paper, scissors type ordeal with techs, where it's like you can't tech against everything, but you're good yeah. against one thing and there's something that counters it. It just, I like staples like that in the game where it's dependent on the deck, I suppose. Okay, is that pretty much it? Yeah. Yeah. All right, my number five is bring back ultimate rares. Because right now, all we have for ultimate rares is like uh, the tournament packs or whatever. The, uh, I forgot the, I think they're just called tournament packs, but um, that's all we get. That's all we get. And so in my opinion, it was nice to actually have an ulti out of a pack because like, imagine like that box that like you just opened. He just opened three boxes of secret slayers. Um, okay. Some cool cards. He, he, he digs Eldritch, really digs it. Um, but imagine like that those cards like could have been, some of them could have been ultis. That would have been like, oh my God, like you, it makes it so much cooler to buy packs and buy boxes because you actually have more than just like, okay, well I know that like these are the only things I can get a set. Yeah, you could pull one of those, but you could pull an ulti of it, which yeah. makes it that much cooler. The, uh, there's really only been like one rarity I've ever been like, oh shit. Ghost yeah, rare? Ghost rare, yeah. Bring those back too. I mean, that can be part of it too. Just bring back ghost rares and ultis. And here's the thing, Konami, if you're listening, watching. Um, I'm sure the whole thing was like, well, it's harder to print that stuff. It, it takes more time, more money to, to find the, the ultimate rare or ghost rare design of it. Ghost rare for me, certain cards look cool, but then other cards it just like looked... It's like you would literally look at it and be like, I have no idea what card that is that's supposed to be. That I don't think is a good ghoster. But ultis, I think that when they initially came out with ultis, they looked great. And then 5Ds, they like looked really, really, really good. And then I think in Zexel, I there's certain ones that look good and other ones you're just like, okay, you really had no idea what you were doing. You're just kind of like, hey, look, it's it's ultimate rare, but yeah. it didn't look beautiful. Um, and that's when they kind of, they stopped in like mm -hmm. the end of 2015. And I think like... I think you should bring it back. I really do. I, I miss it. Like it was just that extra oomph in your like box, like yeah. to make you want to buy. I also it. wouldn't mind like maybe a palette swap of a card or something like that, just what? to make it a little bit more wild. What do you mean? I don't know, just like a completely different type of rarity, being like. Well, they did that with prismatic rares. Oh yeah, that was a mistake, wasn't it? 
Eh, I mean, I don't, I don't really think they're that cool looking. That's the difference. Is like some people dig them, and I'm just like, eh, whatever. Like, bring back like, Noble Knight rarity. No, that is <laughs> disgusting. No one wants to see. Inflict them. actual damage on oh. real humans. Oh, <laughs> uh, all right, your number four. Uh, my number four is. Uh, I feel like I should have put this higher up on my list because it's. It really is important to me. But uh, that's lore, inside the game, and um, it's. Uh, I want cards that tell a story. Like with the Eldritch stuff and the whole Road to El Dorado story where it's like the Golden City and uh, why are they zombies? Clearly some, something didn't work out for somebody. Yeah, <laughs> why are they zombies? Yeah. Um, I'm so interested in the story. Uh, I want, But I want like a whole archetype that just tells a story of stuff that's happening maybe to one person, maybe to a place. Like with the Eldritch stuff and El Dorado, like what the fuck is happening? Like, really, like that's the sort of stuff I mentioned. Really cool concept, and I, I I like how they executed everything, and I'm like that that's really cool. Like as far as the rest of the archetypes, the snow flowers, which are Rikas. Yeah. And eh, what what I would say is like bad about that is like lazy artwork. The, those what, those they, chicks look bad. Like they look man. The right gate looks good, but I think the rest of them look. They just they do the same generic chick face on every single card now. Yeah. Like every single girl has like this same face. It's it, it's the circle eyes like. There's no like design in the eyes. They don't look like it. Just like circle, doughy face. Like just no sharp edges. It's just yeah. everything. Yeah. It uh it sucks because like I was really kind of looking forward to there being some plant support, especially like because my favorite archetype in the whole game is aromages, and um, I was hoping that these Rikas would be like more aromages, but they weren't. So there's that, and uh, there's no real story to the Ricos? They're just sort of Yeah, I don't they're, they're, Yeah, they're they're the, they're not that interesting to be there's, honest with you. There's nothing being yeah. told there. At emancipators though. I, again though, they're cool, but like they're researching rocks. There are rocks and the rocks turn into sort of beasts somehow, I guess. Yeah. But there's no like there's no like story being told there i don't know maybe there'll be more cards you don't know because sometimes like sometimes they do that with these subsets where they're like okay cool we'll make more support for it and i think that will probably happen yeah i like that because uh, because at emancipators you haven't like there's still uh attributes like obviously you know earth is the every rock type so i think they'll probably won't do that but they'll do like a dark and a light i think they'll eventually get to those would be cool like yeah. uh, i don't know but I mean, I guess even even with the Eldritch stuff, there's not really that much of a story being told. It, it I'm just like well, digging into it. It's just based off of stuff. something yeah. in, in real mythology that we're like, okay, cool, we like yeah. that, yeah. So I mean, there's definitely more room for that. I mean, there's hundreds and thousands of stories that have been told in human yeah. history that like have been passed down. You could always go into that. See, but the, like I will say, and this is gonna be a long video, guys. So just stick with us. If you don't like it, Sorry. click off. No, it's just it's yeah. a fun video. But, uh, like, in my opinion, like, badly executed, like, real-life stuff, like, Plunder Patrol to do pirates, they look stupid. They look like little stupid goblins instead of, like, actual pirates. You failed. You could have made a cool-looking pirate archetype, but unfortunately, they don't have any good uh, illustrators, you know, artists that can draw good humans anymore. I don't it's feel just, like... I, they went a cartoony direction with it. And when it didn't I, need to be. Yeah, you could have gone someplace. And I'm pretty sure it was a TCG exclusive archive, so we have our artist to blame for that. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah. Um, I, I wish they'd gone something a little bit more gritty. Because I can't I can't say that, like, oh, they don't have the capacity to draw good stuff anymore, because, like, Eldritch looks really good. Dope. Yeah. All that artwork looks good. Okay, that was your number four. Yeah. All right. My number four is... Make fusions specific again. I talked about making a whole video based on this, but I think I can just knock it out in the next, next couple of minutes. Okay, so fusions was the first extra deck mechanic. It was the first like other summon that you could do. Rituals came out like two sets after that, but fusions. What was really cool? Most of them early on sucked. Like most of them, you look back, there are two things that a lot and a lot of them, to be honest with you, have nothing to do with each other. There's like, look at like Roaring Ocean Sea Snake or whatever, the Roaring Ocean Snake takes like Mystic Lamp and Hayasube, which is like, he's a water creature, but like, why does a Mystic Lamp make this like secret? It makes no sense whatsoever. Um, there's a lot of them like that. They're like just two cards, you're like, right, those two have nothing to do with each other. You would think that because they're called fusion monsters, it would be two cards fused together, but that's just not the case. Yeah, okay, so we'll kind of go through the history of it. You got like Black Skull Dragon, which I love, Dark Paladin, 
great fusion of two monsters that actually makes sense with his effect. Mm -hmm. Black Skull Dragon probably should have had an effect or had more attack points. It was at the time, it was a good card, and it was not that, I mean, it was hard to get out, but it was worth it at the time. And I love Black Skull Dragon. Um, and then you had like Blue Eyes Ultimate, 4,500. If you couldn't summon all Blue Eyes out on the field, you could try to fuse into that. Didn't need an effect at the time. Yeah. Okay. And then you got into the GX era. And then you got, you know, like, because I, I don't think in the original uh, Yu-Gi-Oh that like really one fusion monster dominated. You had Blue Eyes Ultimate, but like no one fusion monster really dominated. And then you got into GX era and you got the Elemental Heroes. You had Elemental Heroes and you had Cyber Dragons. Obviously Cyber Dragon was less specific because you were running the same monster and stuff like that. So that was easier. But Cyber Dragons, at least it was like, that's that's it. That's your thing. Everything's treated as Cyber Dragon. Yeah. That's it. You're not just going like, well, I'll just splash anything else in this deck. If it's not treated as Cyber Dragon, it ain't going to work with like the fusion stuff. Uh, Ancient Gears got, you know, Ultimate Ancient Gear going. That was a fusion monster, which I love. He's, you know, he takes two, any other Ancient Gear monsters, but you still have to have Ancient Gear going. And you can tell that's Ancient Gear Golem in the artwork. And so I'm cool with that. Yep. It's the super generic, like, it just, it kills me, man. But GX did a good, like, GX did a good job. The Neo Spatian's all specific, and I love that. And the last specific fusion that was made was Neo Spatian uh, Nebula Neos, I believe, which is the Grand Mole and Dark Panther contact fusion with uh, Neos. And that's what sucks. That was the last one. That was 2018. But he was, like, the first one in a decade, really. Well, we're about to get another one. No, we're not. With Rez? Oh, yeah, well, true. Yeah, Red Eyes Dark Magician, which everyone hates Red Eyes Dragoon. I love the artwork. Yeah, that card's busted as all hell and shouldn't probably exist as far as. It's yeah, not it's that just, good. It's not that good. Whatever. But I <laughs> love his artwork and I love that it's those two monsters fused together. Yes, you can fuse with another dragon, but it won't get the same oomph yeah. uh, with Dark Magician. But so GX, they did it fine. They did fusions great. They, they And Gladiator Beast was another one where like Gladiator Beast was a little less specific, but you still had that one hat. You had to have one specific. Monster to make it. They did have a generic guy, Gladiator Beast. Uh, I forgot what his name is. Like starts with E, I think. He's the one that's like in a chariot a little bit, and he's got like twenty five. He just takes any two Gladiator Beasts. He's the non generic. And he's the then generic we start one. to get into the stuff that I have a little bit of a problem with. It's like one creature fusing with anything else. Is yeah, like that's cool. It's absorbing power from something. No, else. but now but... now it's like you don't even need the one specific creature. It's just no. any two generic things make this. And it's like, it's like how's that fusion? It's not. It's it's just like, hey, here's two. Here's an easy way to summon this monster. So like, five Ds. I don't really. They don't really do summoning like fusion summoning really at all. I don't think there was a fusion summoning uh, archetype that entire time. I don't think. And then Zexel, you didn't really have anything either. I don't think anything was devoted to fusions. And then you got Shadals. Shadals was in Arc V when that started, and Shadals was like the first like, I think really really generic uh, archetype like that for fusions. And Shadals, I'm like, okay. That's the one. Like, okay, if you want to be that, fine. But, like, I guess before that, Omni Heroes, I guess, was the thing. And, like, Omni Heroes, they kind of ruined it, I think. And don't get me wrong, I don't hate all the Omni Heroes. They're okay, but, like, Dark Law, it's the mass change stuff. Mass change is stupid. I hate the hero players. Like, I'm a hero player, and, yeah, I love the mass change stuff. It's like, you're not playing heroes, bro, because you ain't fusion summoning. That's, that's not, not a fusion not, summon. That's not fusion. That's not a fusion summoning. You're taking one monster... And transforming it into another monster. There's, what other card are you fusing with? You're not. And like the whole idea of like a hero changing his mass to become something else. Cool concept. Just don't do something else with it. Not fusions, man. Yeah, like tri trip him, summon a new one from the deck. Like yeah, fine, whatever. Like that'd be cool. Just please don't do like oh it's from the extra deck and now it's like yeah I always have it at my disposal or whatever. It's like yeah the whole point of like the extract was like cool stuff you could go into. Obviously they became more generic as time went on, but it was still like, I thought synchros were fine, XYZs were fine, because it's still two monsters having to make one monster. The problem is when it's one monster making that. Or now, fusions, it's literally anything. Hey, uh, do you have a brother? Actually I do. Okay, I can fuse with you. You're, I got the requirements, I can fuse with you. That's pretty much what it is. Are you breathing right now? Yeah, I am. Fusion material, got you. It's, it's just stupid, man. And like, hey, do you do something? Uh, like what? Anything. Are you an yeah. effect monster? Yeah. Cool. I'll, I'll take it. it. Yeah. Um, it's, they, they just gone way, way over the rails. Of it. And now every single fusion monster, generic. Every single one. And it drives me crazy because I'm like, who honestly looks at that? There's, there's two kinds of people, I think, that play this game. There's the people that are like, oh my God, that's so broken. Must play it. Yeah. And like... People will bitch. I've heard it. Like, people will bitch, like, when a card gets revealed, and they'll be like, 
why is this thing, uh, why does it have specific requirements? Why would you do that? Or they'll be like, oh, this seems like it's too, it's not generic enough. And it's like, all they're asking for, like, would be like, hey, I need like two ancient gear monsters or something like the French gears, like howitzer. They'd be like, that's, that's, no, man, like that, that's too much, man. I need like one ancient gear monster and then whatever else I want. It's like, that's, like we said, that's not a fusion summon. That's just, hey man, take whatever and make this one monster. And that just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Small, small side note, fuck the entirety of the extra deck at this point in the game. It's just, it's kind of become a mockery. Like, it's just like, hey man, like everything's your toolbox now, you can do everything. And that's because of links, which I'll get to. But uh, that's pretty much it for fusions. I went on a pretty long rant, I think. But like, I just bring back what they should be. You have so many cool cards and art designs from the past. You, you make so many cool looking cards, Konami. Fuse them together. Just pick two things and go like, those things will look cool together. Or have a concept for like, I wonder what this would kind of look like. I wonder what effect we could do. Combine two monster effects. They've done that before. They took two monsters. They used to do that all the time. and be like, these two monster effects go together now. Cool concept. Um, I really think that they should keep doing that. Like, I don't know, man. There's, there's so many, there's so many options that you have. Endless options for renewal. Endless <laughs> options for renewal. All right, your number three. My number three, uh, again, I, a lot of this stuff is difficult for me to rank. Like, lore probably should have been higher, but my number three is gimmicks. Uh, I fucking love gimmicks inside of card games. I play uh, a little bit more than Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, I like to play Magic as well, and Magic's got a lot of gimmicks, but... I, I started getting into Magic like in the last like year or two, and like I like it, but I just don't have the same connection that I do have. With it was because of the state that Yu-Gi-Oh was in with. Uh, it was pretty rough the last two years. It's been pretty rough. Yikes! Um, but like, thanks, I, thanks, Link Summoning. Yeah, and you can't do anything else. Just yeah. Link Summoning. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but uh, I, I like I like gimmicks inside the game. Uh, that being like. Like I said earlier, Romich being my favorite like archetype because it has to do with life, life gain. And uh, another one of my favorite archetypes in the game is the Endman stuff, which has to do with spell counters. And just things that have a specific resource that you use that other things don't use. I like that when it happens inside of a game. Uh, my banishment deck very specifically just deals with having a resource, my banished cards, that I use as... Uh, an energy source inside the deck. Uh, I like Zambos a lot because they just fuel the graveyard and then the more things you have in the graveyard, the more things you can do because they just feed off of each other inside the graveyard. I just like it when there's a very specific mechanic that uh, your deck or you, you as a player use in order to go about winning in a roundabout way. Like even to the point of liking Exodia type stuff where I don't exactly like watching someone play solitaire and being like did you get it? But at the same time you want different play styles. Yeah, like because well, because unfortunately Yeah, it's like a lot of what Yu-Gi-Oh has been for I would say like the last five to six years has been like spam spam this It's unfortunate because that's what they think that like everything has to be fast. It's like I'm okay with the combat like Sylvan's for example Sylvans can pop the hell off. Yeah. But if you look at each card individually, you're not like, oh, that's busted. They have to work together. They all have to work together. You kind of have to have one to two to three cards to kind of get your combo going. I don't like, I hate cards that are like one card combos. Like, oh, here you go. There it is. Like, exception to kind of like Deep Sea Diva, because that's just like a mermail thing. But the cards that are like, I can one card do this, and then like, it doesn't matter what else you have in your hand. Mermels, you have to at least be like, okay, well, I got the Diva, I got a Neptibus, but if I don't have anything to, like, pitch the Dragoons with, like, you know, other stuff, like, I, I can get a one Mermel uh, Megalo, but, like, that's it. Well, it's not even, I don't mind if, like, one card's particularly strong, because you can stop one card with, like, a Counter Trap or a Hand Trap or something, but it's, because, uh, like, one card being strong starting a combo... And, like, doing what your deck does is cool to me, but when every deck does the same thing, yeah. that's where my problem comes in. I just want more variety. I want there to be, like, a purpose to your deck that isn't the same thing as the your opponent. Yeah, and, and I'll get into it because it's, it's coming down on my list. I mean, that's it's on there, but, like, Link Summoning, another reason why I fucking can't stand it is because it's what you just said, where everyone turns their decks into, like, well, actually, I can just get a Boral Sword Dragon with this deck. 
I'll just I'll just spam a bunch of monsters and get tokens. And I'll just uh, oh look at that cool combo. And Lame. I, I mean, that started way back with like synchros because a lot of people did that with synchros too. It but just... you had to play a tuner in your main deck to do that, and you had to line up the levels. And I'm not saying that I... was impossible. No, I know. But before synchros, your extra deck was almost useless yeah. unless you were a cyber dragon player. What were you, or e hero player? What were you doing with your extra? Not a whole lot. No, I, I dig it. The synchros were definitely a, a welcome change to the yeah, game. Yeah, because it sped up the game, but not to like a ridiculous extreme. Don't get me wrong. Junk Doppel is a deck where it's like you could yeah. just like synchro, 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 synchro. But that's its own deck. Yeah. You try to like take half of those and put them in another deck. They don't really work. And even X, too much setup. Even XYZs were a welcome addition to the game, but like at that point, it had gotten to like. Well, how much can I just abuse the game? How much can I just put out things that don't matter in order to get out the things that do matter to me? And it eventually just became most decks were just spamming of the extra deck to like, oh, this goes into this, to this, to this, to this. End goal is the same creature for everybody. And that bothered me. Yeah, I don't I don't like the... That, I'll agree with you on that. I don't like the, hey... My whole goal is to get out this same because, like, let's say, like Crystalwing, for example. One I would. Of my most I know. Cards I know you do, time. and I don't. I don't mind the card like himself in a in a bubble. But I will say, like, yeah, if your goal is like, well, I'm gonna get a Crystalwing. It's like, but well, what deck are you playing? Like, well, I'm playing like I don't know. Like, I can make it in Sylvans, but if I was like, my goal is to make Crystalwing, I can make that in a whole bunch of other decks too. And it's like, if that's your whole point, that's kind of lame. It four cards. Yeah, it's just throw the wind witches. Well, the wind witch is a one card crystal wind that can't be destroyed by card effects if you draw the one. Um, that's stupid. But yeah, like no, I agree with you. If, if the whole extra deck is just like okay, cool. Well, like yeah, it's it's just what it, screw my main deck. It's just the extra deck. But like I said, if it's fusions, it's a little bit different because you're like okay, this is a fusion deck. That's what it does. These things are meant to fuse together. At least that takes poly. And then well, neo spaces don't. But well, I don't yeah. think you have a problem with that because. Well, no, Neospatians are very unique. Yeah, in, the, in the contact fusion, but unlike like ABC, or not ABCs, VWXYZs did contact fusion, but theirs got banished. Neospatians were the first ones that like straight up return to your deck, and then I think Gladiator Beasts, uh, you know, they would attack, then go back to your deck. When they contact fuse, I think, I think they get banished, or maybe they go back to your deck, I don't remember. But, uh, Either way, I would say the gimmick of Neospatians is having drawbacks to their cards. Yeah, they do, and that's that's another thing, which, are you are we good with this one, basically? Go ahead. Okay. My number three, reverse power creep. So, what I mean by that, <clears throat> I constantly hear all this time where people are like, oh man, like the power creep, the power creep, the power creep, well, what do we do? What do we do about it? And then some people are like, well, we can't go back. The fuck you can't? You Who has the power in this game? Konami has all the power in this game. If tomorrow they said, like, Every card that was made after 2014 does not count. Like, screw that. Hard reset. They could do that. We would all be like, what? What? But, like, they could literally just be like, hey, every card from 2014 on, we banned it. And you'd be like, well, that's ridiculous. But, like, that's their rules. I mean, our game. you can't say You can't say they're like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe they would make, like, a, a whole, like, uh, era of Yu-Gi-Oh! useless because they kind of fucking did when they did links and were like, hey, your synchros and XYZ monsters? Nah, son. Your fusion? Nah, son. Like, you don't need to get one of those. It's not like players have a mind of their own, because they don't really... Yeah. Well, like, reverse power creep, what I'm talking about basically is like, okay, so they keep making a new deck, and a new deck, and a new deck to beat the old ones. Be like, it has to be stronger than the last one. It has to be stronger than the last one. Here's the thing. You have the banlist for a reason, and I've always loved the way they use the banlist, because that's how it's supposed to be used. Let it, you know, good deck comes in, let it do its thing, and then hit the cards, and that way the people that hate those decks don't have to see those at that power for a while. Yeah. And yeah, eventually, that's the whole thing. A couple years down the line, yeah, you can let them off or whatever and let those players go back to playing those decks. But that's that's the correct way to handle that kind of power creep. The problem is, stop making so much broken stuff in the game. My problem is not even always with the decks that they make. Sometimes it is with the decks. But a lot of times it's with the generic stuff. Stop making Ash Blossom. Like, Ash Blossom did not need to be made. Red Reboot did not need to be made. Infinite and permanent. Stop making trap cards that just activate straight from the fucking hands. Like, what is that? And I know I said I want more, like, stable support. But that's, that's not what you're the, talking about. That's not the kind of stuff I was no. talking about. Completely different. Yeah, you're talking about, like, hey, equip to a warrior monster and, like, gain, like, 1,500 attack points. Yeah, kind of thing. Like, like, that would be cool. Generic like, support for specific things, I yeah. guess. It, I don't know how to describe it. Well, like, it. Sea Serpents, they just came out with a card called Deep Sea Aria that says, like, banish one uh, level... 
Banish one water monster, or maybe it's, yeah, Banish one water monster from your graveyard, add one level four lower sea serpent from deck to hand. Yeah. And that's a hard one to turn to activate that card. That's sea serpent support. That's, that's cool shit. Yeah. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, that, that works. Right there. The rock stuff that they're, that they're announcing, like, Super into the rock. Yeah, that's that's good support. They had a, they just made a foolish burial that says like if you have fossil fusion in your graveyard, you can also draw a card. But in general, pitch a level four lower rock from deck to grave. Yeah. That's good. Uh, like yeah, I don't know. There's there's just different ways to do it, and they just they screwed up. But my main point, just to hammer this home and, and let you move on to your number two, the main thing is just like stop saying that it can't be done because it can be done. <clears throat> and the whole argument about like well if it's not broken, people won't buy product. That's bullshit because People will buy stuff. What do they What do they want? Okay, you have the people that are obviously meta sheep that are just like, oh my gosh, it's good, it's great, I have to play it because I want to win and prove what? That you can pick up a deck that everyone else is using and win, I guess, if that's what you're out to prove. The main thing is people want a deck that does something that has, like you said, a gimmick or just a play style. They have that and they want to look at the artwork and be like, I like the artwork and I like the play style and I want to have fun playing the game. That's what most people want or at least what they should want in my opinion. I'm not telling everyone what they should think, but like, I think that's a healthy thing for the game to be like, yeah, I like that, okay, whatever. And I it's just, like, more than anything, I mean, even more than this whole list, is if you, if a player could have cards represent something about themselves and play and win, that's what I want more than anything. Yeah. And I just feel like that's not in the game anymore. Well, I think they're get, they're doing a good job of bringing cool they, stuff in. They are, with the whole pull thing. Like, what do you guys want us to make support for? It? Fossil it stuff. That's amazing. I was, well, when they did that poll and they were like, fossil, like, what decks do you want to see? And, like, Jim Crocodile Cooks, Fossil Fusion stuff. I was like, yes, please make that. Because I watched GX Season 3 and I remember it. His cards were always cool. The whole concept of fusing from the graveyard was awesome. And I love dinosaurs, so that T-Rex skeleton thing was amazing. So the fact that they've made it into a, they've made those into cards, and the fact that he has no negates, does not negate anything, but he does double battle damage and has 3,500 and has piercing and can switch the attack and defense of something, I love it. I'm an OTK player mainly. I don't really generally like to do control. I'd rather just like over overpower you overwhelm you and be like holy fuck how do i deal with all this damage that's what i love to do and that card embodies that for me and i was going to probably make that deck anyway but the fact that like that card i'm like oh i love your effect great i love that okay anyway that's enough of my rambling number two could do a whole video about how, yeah. how much i hate negates by the way yeah um <clears throat> let me look it up real quick oh yeah my number two uh just to push home like a deck that I loved up till the point where I like started playing it, like Noble Knights, and the whole reason I wanted to play them is about equipment. And I thought equipment is just an amazing thing in the fucking game. It's so cool to have like to give something to like a monster where and they keep a hold of it. It's not just like well, a temporary buff. What's your number two point? Equipment. That's what, what I want. What about it? I want more equipment in the so game. So you want more equipped cards? Yes. Okay, well that's what you're talking about. Equipped cards, okay. yeah. It's just, um, but like Noble Knights specifically didn't do it properly, didn't do it justice, because it's like legendary swords, but it's all swords. And it's not like if you equip them all to one creature, it's like that creature could use all those swords. It doesn't really make sense. And I don't really want like a dude with five swords. I want a dude that's like, fucking seriously equipped i want a dude that's like decked out in like gear head to toe that has something that they can use something along the lines of like the guardian stuff yeah because you talked about that. yeah uh the guardians were a cool concept that each one had its own equipment card that needed to be on the field for it to come out that was cool very uh, special re regarding your point the thing i'll say the reason why most people don't play equips is they don't think it gives them enough advantage where it's worth playing where they're like okay like yeah i'd have to hard draw this and then they're like look at their card in their hand, like, I'd rather have a combo piece than have this. Unless your equip card is part of a combo piece, most people don't play it. Or if it's part of, like, you know, OTK and your opponent, whatever. In my opinion, what they could do, Mermails. I play one, and I'm about to play two equip cards in there. Because, okay, the Mermail equips, they boost attack, they gain, or they have the ability to negate uh, either, you know, a monster effect, a trap, or a spell card, depending on which one you equip. I like that they have those all three. Don't get me wrong. Is that always necessary? It's just an added bonus. But to be honest, they kind of balanced it because as soon as it, you don't have a choice to negate, it will automatically negate and send itself to the graveyard. Yeah. And if your opponent plays a continuous trap or continuous spell or whatever, 
that shit stays on the field and your stuff just like goes away and fades away and does nothing. But what I'll say is the biggest thing of why those are playable in the deck, searchable. You summon Megalo, he will automatically search one. Make more stuff like that where like make a warrior archetype where you're like, hey, I came out, cool, grab my sword from the deck. That's not too broken, I don't think. Well, another part of like why I was saying like equipment instead of saying equip cards is because I thought the union thing was kind of cool where cards would like Voltron with each other to make things. And I'm not talking the whole like VW XYZ route because that stuff was like it, they didn't really Voltron together. You just fused them at a certain point and they just became one monster. Uh, I want like one thing specifically equipped where it's like, the more stuff you get, the harder it becomes to deal with up to like a certain cap. And then, I don't know, go wild from there. It just, I don't know how to describe it from a gameplay standpoint because I don't want to take the time to have to build an entire archetype just to make my point. I just want more equipability, more things to attach. Uh, and I know like that puts like poppable targets on the field, but I don't really care I just want cool gameplay. Yeah, I mean, I'm with you, and Equips are always cool gameplay. I've never really cared for unions, though, like, to be honest with you. It's not the, like, the concept of, like, sure, something being like, hey, I can, like, merge with you or whatever. But the thing is, like, you already have fusion. So, like, a union monster is, like, a fusion but not a fusion. That's why it really never makes a lot of sense to me. It's like, did you fuse? No, we just kind of, like, combined forces. Like, isn't that kind of a fusion? And you just don't become something new. You just kind of stack onto it. With the VW XYZs, it makes sense because you're like, well, they're not fusing to make something completely different. They're just kind of adding on to each other. But the thing I've never liked about it in Yu-Gi-Oh! is that something, it never looks right to me to see a monster in the spell and trap card zone like that. It just looks stupid to me. Um, and I, 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 think I don't I, know what the answer to that is. Well, I think that there's a weird way they could go about something like that. Like uh, how... Um... Make it a new extra deck summoning mechanic, and then you no, just no, please don't do dude, that, dude. Just people already just would just make a link summon. Take, I mean, that's my like my one of my next things. Just take links out. Anyway. Yeah, uh, no, but like, uh, what is it? Cyber darks? Yeah, that, like rip things out of the graveyard and like attach them yeah, to themselves. Yeah, yeah, cyber that's a cool concept. Cyber darks are cool because the things that you equip to look like they're meant to be equipped. I always had a problem with like things that like. That has no business being equipped to anything. It looks, it doesn't look like it should be equipped to anything. Like they'd have like uh, warriors. They'd be like, equip me. And it's like, you just look like a dude. Like, how are you going to like equip to me? Like that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. I don't know. You could like, I don't know how to describe something like that, but like, I'd like something along a conceptual line of like, say you have something that gets destroyed, goes to the graveyard or something like that. You summon a different creature, and this creature has an effect where they use things that have been destroyed. It doesn't even have to be anything specific. They just attach something to themselves to gain a power boost. I, that'd be kind of interesting. I, I think, okay, so like they did like with Dark Blade, he had like two different dragons that he wrote on. There was Pitch Dark, pitch Black Dragon or something like that, and then you had like Kiryu, and like I think both of those were Union Monsters, and Dark Blade was meant to like ride on top of those. That'd be cool. Yeah, that's what I'm saying.